Hopefully, by the end of this video, you might have learned something you didn't know about Hypermill. And we're going to talk about two topics, feature recognition and trimming toolpaths. I'm here with Justin from OpenMind to go through some of these features and, and to educate me as well as you guys on things that I don't know. So, Justin, let's start with feature recognition. It's such a big thing for Hypermill. So, what is it and how do you use it? Sure. So you have, when you have CAD models, you have things like holes. Well, holes are anything that's generally prismatic. So holes, pockets, and flat faces, things like that can be defined as features. So it, it's kind of a, it, it gives you less work to do up front. So by feature finding the CAD model, we will know well, what holes are in there, what diameter they are, what depth they are, whether there's any chamfers in there, whether it's a multi-drilled hole. We'll also know the angle of that hole. All that information's in there. So then once you have your tooling, it's a case of pick hole and it does what it needs to do. Now, there's also a way of automating this as well, isn't there, which I find really interesting. So how does that work and how does color selection also work? Absolutely. So in its simple terms, you find the feature and you apply toolpaths to the feature. The next level is if you've got a family of parts or if you're always doing an M8 hole in aluminium the same, then we should be automating that process because we know you're going to spot drill it, we know you're going to drill it, etc. So, so we can create macro routines to automate those. And then if you've got something like um, a flat face or even a curvature face, anything that isn't a normal standard feature, we can color code and we can make that into a process feature. So either in Hypermill or, or outside in a, in a third party CAD system, we can color a surface blue and, it, and then Hypermill will know, oh, well, when it's blue, I have to do, and it's your process, whatever you put in there. So I like what you're saying there. And if you've got a family of parts that are all quite similar, but there's a few features that might be slightly different, instead of reprogramming every one, you can just say, well, on my last program, I did this and I've colored that blue. So in my next one, I've colored it blue, so I want you to do the same thing. Exactly that, and I think when people think of automation, they think of the complete job, and you think, oh, it's far too complex. You've got to think of automation. If it can do some stages, it still saved you some time. So it might be that with work holding, that when you load up your part, you automatically want the work holding to come in and clamp on the part. You don't want to be doing that and putting mating surfaces in. Software will just do it for you, because it knows you just choose from your vices, pick your vice, and it will clamp it. So it's, it's not making the part for you, but that stage is a laborious stage that you don't really want to do, automate it. But that, much, that must make programming parts a lot quicker because, like, like we said before, if you've got parts that are similar, you only have to program the harder bits and leave Hypermill to do the rest. Yeah, because you might have, if, if you machine a lot of aluminium, you're probably always using the same face mill in the machine. You're probably always using similar, similar cuts because you just want to get material off. Automate that process. Now, we spoke about the automation and the feature recognition, but looking at this part, that finish looks amazing. Yeah, it does. Now, a lot of, a lot of people would see this finish and think, well, th there's going to be a lot of wasted time because you, if you're finishing that with an end mill, your end mill is going, going to be going across the pockets. So how does trimming a tool path help with such a situation? Okay, well in roughing, you automatically trim because you always work to a stock. So it won't cut fresh air, it'll always know it needs to approach outside and it will always machine to stock. But we have a very, very uh, highly used stock model. So all the way through each machining cycle, you can create a stock model. It's done at the same time. There's no extra time for it. So we can trim to stock in finishing as well. So with this flat plane, for example, you might just want to create a surface that caps over all the holes and it's one big kind of uh, simplified square or rectangular surface. And you can apply the tool path to it all, but it will trim it back to stock. It knows which bit it needs to cut. So it's always minimizing any unnecessary cuts. So then it's going to essentially miss out all the fresh air cutting, which is going to save you time. It's going to save you money. Yeah. And it's just going to make the whole process a lot simpler and you're going to get really nice looking tool paths, which essentially give you really nice looking parts at the end of that as well. And you're not having to create lots of boundaries, etc., picking geometry to make that happen. So if any of the points raised in this video pique your interest, 
then give the guys at Open Mind a call and maybe they could help you be more productive and save money. And if you like videos like this from MTD, drop us a like, leave us a comment of what you would like to see more of, and also don't forget to hit the subscribe button.